Cloud and Gadget taking a look at the software on the HTC Flyer. This is Sense 3.0 that we're looking at, which may be familiar to you from uh, the new, two new smartphones that HTC has just introduced, the Evil 3D and the Sensation. None of them are actually on sale, so this is the first Sense 3.0 device that you'll be able to buy. But uh, this is still basically just Android Gingerbread as customized by HTC with its uh, Sense Skin. Uh, some things that are specific to the new 3.0 system are these more three-dimensional um, widgets that you can see. So there are these metallic elements kind of continuing the idea of this being uh, a three-dimensional flipping uh, clock kind of a thing. So now you have these little circles on the side. Um, here this uh, UI element splits up into layers so there's this this whole three-dimensional thing that is going through the entire interface but there is nothing really functional that has been added um, in terms of the UI you're still looking at a number of home screens on the tablet you have eight they work in portrait orientation and landscape um, you have 16 uh, spaces for icons on each home screen uh, these, as you can see, they get kind of squashed together when you're in landscape mode. This kind of works uh, pretty well. It's, it's probably quite difficult to make something work in both portrait and or landscape orientation. So HC, HC has done a pretty good job, but it is uh, also kind of inescapable to note the fact that this is a smartphone interface scaled up to 7 inches. It's not necessarily a terrible thing, but it's very much uh, familiar and consistent with what you'll be getting on the 4.3 inch Sense 3.0 devices. Uh, coming back out to the lock screen, uh, well you can see this rather resplendent uh, weather animation. It's, it's, also, it's good and bad. Uh, the good is obvious, it, it gives you information, it is uh, quite pretty to look at, but it makes responsiveness on the lock screen a little bit slower than if you have just a static image. Aside from that, you can have a static image, it's, it's an option. Um, but aside from that, oh, this also works in uh, landscape orientation, you have these four uh, customizable shortcuts at the bottom. Uh, you can unlock the tablet by dragging the activation ring into the middle or by dragging an app into the activation ring. So for example, if you want to go into the camera, you can do that. You jump straight into that app and you can, you know, you can just be shooting immediately. So that's really nice. Uh, we love that. Um, having only four shortcuts isn't many, but it's probably uh, enough, uh, we suppose, for a start. It, it, it beats anything else that doesn't have any uh, of these shortcuts, so we're not complaining that much. Uh, down here at the bottom, instead of uh, the usual applications, phone, and personalization menus, you now have three customizable shortcuts. Uh, again, very nice. Uh, we, we like to have those available. Um, the notes application is uh, linked up to the magic pen is what HD calls it is the stylus um, sadly this is actually the only application that really makes thorough and good use of the stylus uh, you, you can start making notes immediately on top of it using um, the lower button you can highlight text as you can see there uh, you, using the upper button you uh, it turns it into an eraser and not pressing any buttons is the way that you can draw. So you can draw straight into this application uh, with the stylus. Anything else that you want to work uh, on top of, you actually have to take a screenshot of. So for example, if you're in the web browser, uh, such as here, uh, let's take a look here, you actually need to take a screenshot, which is done by tapping on the screen with the stylus, like so. You press save, that sends it straight to the notes application, but if you want to look at the full image, you go into your gallery, and HC calls these screenshot scribbles, so you've got your scribble right here, and now you can start annotating on top of this. Uh, down here at the bottom is your dedicated key for the stylus, it can only be activated with the stylus, uh, it doesn't respond to the human touch, that's available here in portrait mode, also available down here in landscape mode, so you can use it in both orientations as well. Uh, the options that you're given in the menu, first is for the size uh, of your input, so from very small to pretty large, uh, then is for what kind of tips you might you might want to use, and then obviously a palette for colors. 
Uh, one thing we will say about pressure sensitivity is that the marker pen shows it off best. There isn't much, to be quite fair. So hard, sen um, hard pressure looks like this, soft pressure looks like this, and there isn't much, uh, much of a range in between the two. It doesn't really have a great variety of sensitivities. It's almost binary. It, it either knows that you're pressing hard or soft. Um, that's about that. Um, what we would say is that uh, the magic pen works very well uh, for most things, but um, it's it's quite hard to actually do anything with any precision. So trying to draw or write, for example, you you end up writing it in a very big, um, very big text just because the precision of an actual pen just isn't available with this. What we we'll say is that if you're happy with uh, slightly cruder doodles or drawings, uh, this would do the job. Um, it's also surprising how much time you you actually end up using it, in spite of the fact that there isn't a great variety of applications available for it. Um, if you go back into our notes here, I'll give you an example of something we created earlier. It's just uh, a great deal of fun to be drawing with this thing, and it's it's not necessarily something that we can explain directly is just uh, a, a very very much a fun experience and an enjoyable one um, and th this can be useful for example the notes application also includes a voice recording feature up here so if you are at a presentation or a lecture or something of that sort you can be taking notes whether with the pen or with the on-screen keyboard um, the keyboard is also terrific terrific to type on um, in, particularly in terms of uh, thumb typing it, it just seems to be the perfect size because um, it just fits. Uh, you know, you, you comfortably reach the middle with both of your thumbs, but it's also so wide and spacious um, that it makes it very fast. We, we basically don't even see the need to ever go into landscape orientation uh, when it comes to typing. This actually feels more awkward than holding it in portrait mode. Um, this is an ob observation we had with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7-inch, and it hasn't changed with this 7-inch device. It's just a great size for thumb typing. But in any case, you can be taking notes with the keyboard, with the stylus, annotating away, and then up here, uh, you're recording voice. And the other thing, which you might be able to spot up here, is that you have little timestamps for when your notes are happening on the audio recording. So if you're actually taking a note on here, the application recognizes that, does a little timestamp, and it's a very quick and easy way to connect uh, the note with the audio. Um, which might actually be very handy. What we've noticed is that it needs a bit of a gap in time between notes in order to introduce a new timestamp. But generally speaking, there is a lot of practical use uh, for this stylus as well as um, the fun of it for doodling purposes. Uh, the only disappointing thing is that HTC just gives us really just this one app to use it in. The only other app that is available is this uh, so-called kid mode. It's just an app. It's not really a mode as such. Um, which is provided by Zudus, and once you get into it, there's a bunch of games, uh, art books, etc. The art application is basically Microsoft Paint, um, or something like Microsoft Paint, it's not done by Microsoft. Uh, it recognizes finger input, or the stylus. We really would have appreciated HTC actually giving us uh, a fully fledged uh, art or drawing application on here, but there isn't one, disappointingly. Um, there also isn't a great deal of applications that make use of the larger uh, screen. It's a 1024 by 600 resolution, but there is nothing that really harnesses that uh, better than the 4-inch or the 4.3-inch uh, smartphones that we've seen from HTC running Gingerbread. Um, th there are a few tweaks, so we'll just go through those uh, nice and quickly. Firstly, down here you have notifications and quick settings. Quick settings is something that HTC introduced in their Gingerbread build. Um, you, you can toggle between the two when you're in portrait mode or you can actually see both alongside each other in landscape mode uh, and this is also continued in a couple of apps which uh, we really appreciate the way that it's done here in the gallery when you're in portrait mode you only see the gallery as normal but uh, in landscape you actually see a list of your galleries on the left and the contents of those galleries or albums uh, over here on the right so this is very nice, uh, it gives you an overview on the left side and then actual detail on the right side. Same is also true here in the calendar. We really find this handy having a weekly or a monthly overview on the left 
and and the day's content on the right. This is pretty good stuff. Also in the browser, um, we've got this tabs menu, which actually this is a funny thing. Everything else works in landscape rather than portrait, but this works best in portrait orientation. Um, you can add another tab right here. And when you have multiple tabs, this is just a great way to visualize them. You have a preview of each tab, and you can just jump between them effortlessly. You could be looking at one tab, close the other one uh, without leaving the tab that you're reading. And this is just a really, really handy, really fun way to navigate between your windows when you're browsing the web. Really appreciate that. Um, and you can just, it's a drop down menu, you can just open it, close it nice and quickly. Uh, browser performance is also very nice and snappy. As you can see, scrolling is uh, pretty effortless, pretty smooth. Uh, pinch to zoom is the same way. And flash video playback is uh, absolutely no problem. Works brilliantly. Uh, so, great job on the whole. Uh, another, another little application, it's an exclusive one actually for HTC. This is available here. Um, on the flyer and will also be available on the sensation this is HTC watch it isn't actually uh, live yet as such so you can't buy or rent movies which is the central purpose of it there are only trailers available here at the moment but we'll just play play one back um, to give you an idea of the quality what you might expect from the final service AC tells us that this will be activated very very soon indeed uh, so we're actually we, we, we've started this trailer already so it's picking up from where we were earlier. We we'll turn the sound up. All the sex we don't want to have with women, but we have to. All due to what you guys do. And we do it again and again. Hey, hey, hey. If I want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm and work your mouth like a puppy. Peace out. You're real, real characters. Yeah. You stop it, man. What? So there you go. Uh, video quality looks terrific. We know these are just trailers, but video quality looks terrific. Um, there are two stereo speakers down here, which do a decent job, they're not the best in the world, but they do a decent job of uh, pumping out audio, they can get pretty loud. Um, and we've just stumbled into the list of applications over here. But uh, that's, uh, that's a just quick overview of the HC Flyer. Uh, responsiveness, performance have, have uh, been tipped up, everything's been great. The only thing we would warn about is that this is still very much it still has the feel of uh, smartphone OS and we, we, we're actually keen to see what HC does with this um, when it introduces a honeycomb update because that's when we'll see quite a lot more in terms of tablet functionality and hopefully quite